Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is 2011 uh, on whatever day this is. I think it's Thursday. Um, just thought I'd give you an update. Anyone is interested in how this thing is going, this project. It's starting to get a bit cold at night. So um, I'm having to come up with a, a strategy not to freeze to death because that tent is getting rather cold. And if you look at it, it's in an appalling state. You'll notice that the platform has all disappeared. Um, I've salvaged that and uh, removed it all. So I'm going to be sleeping rather uncomfortably tonight whilst I'm getting the tiny house project going. Okay, so at the minute I've got my fire on there. I just had a shower just in the doorway there um, because it's, it's very blowy and quite cold. Uh, but once you get inside, it's nice. So this is the way the life is going to be. It's going to be cool on the night time, which is just what I love. I'll be able to go out at night. I'll be just put a coat on. And uh, what a great life, you know, and not being hot all the time and not being cold either. I like to be warm. Warm is kind of a hard thing to define, but it's it's being dry and not cold, but not overly hot. A sensation of, of just being in control of your body temperature. So you'd like, if you got too hot, you would just flush up and lose the heat. But I'm always in a in an environment where it's like cranked up the limit, like the Philippines or or freezing cold in the UK or whatever. So anyway, that is a mess now. And that's all wrecked and I've got to tidy out all the interior of that. I've got rubbish all over the place here. I've got this great big long plant, long dead tree that I dragged back from the forest. It's, it's a fire hazard, so I'm actually doing an environmental help by getting rid of this overburden of fuels in the forest, uh, picking up bits of rubbish. Um, so, let's go downstairs and let's take a look at what I've been doing. Now, I've had some problems with this. This is exhausting work. But um, once you get inside, it's not so bad because you, the sun is not beating down on you, so... The trick, if you're going to do jobs in the, in Portugal, if in the in the heat, is to just work indoors. You know, just work indoors all the time. Um, the second door here, this one, I've broken it down to let air flow through the house because I want to not be breathing all this crap, basically, um, literally. Um, and here's some of it I've dug out, not a lot. But it's, um, if I can get a camera on it, it's, uh, it's very unpleasant to work with, extremely unpleasant. So, I've been working indoors in this part here. And when you allow this place to settle, it's reasonably fresh, it's not too bad. So, the some of that gantry thing up there has, has gone missing. I've stolen a couple of boards from that. Tomorrow, that's all going to go, because I need every little bit of wood that I can get my hands on. That's the original door. I was considering use it, reusing it. Uh, the, the problem with sort of budget jobs is that you do the job and then you have to redo it later. So it's better not to do the job in the first place sometimes. But anyway, this is it. This is the structure that I'm putting on the interior of the in the corner of the house so it meets the wall there it goes along to here and uh, i think it's about two meters long which is about the length of a bed and i've turned the corner on it if you can just see that turned the corner and now i have to head off in the other direction which is this big void here and fill that in so once once that's filled in i have to put a, a roof on it now, payday, I think it's the 27th or the 28th. Payday is about the 31st. I've got about three more days to wait till I get some money through. And I've got to buy that vis green sheet. And then the next thing is that goes down on the floor. And I start to lay the clay floor, which will then receive these saltillo tile type things that I'm trying to construct. We'll see if it works. Um, and then that's it. And then things will really start to move from then once I've got a decent floor in and I've got to carry on with the roof. I need to close all the all the openings in the house. 
and I will have this nice clean little room here. I'll start plastering it as well. And I'll have a lovely little clean room uh, to work and sleep in uh, because it's, it, it is really grim here, you know. And you don't want to get depressed, uh, especially in the winter time, and not do work and just cuddle up in bed and not be doing any work because I really need to get this project, get some substantial home created in within this structure here. This wall uh, gave me a lot of trouble. I, I hung it, I hung it first on the top, nailed it up. It's my hand in view. Hung it on the top with some nails on this beam. And it fitted at the bottom perfectly. And then all of a sudden, when I start nailing it, it's moved. And then it's jamming at the bottom. So I'm going to bash the, the bedrock in order to get the wall to slide again. But it's basically pretty le uh, level and um, and straight now. This gap here, these have to be nailed in. One criticism of Portugal, you don't seem to have annular ring nails. An annular ring nail is a, it's kind of like a screw. It's got a ring around it, loads and loads of rings around the nail. When you hammer it in, it doesn't come out. It won't slide. All the Portuguese nails are the awful slidey ones, you know, that don't really hold wood together at all. They just stop things moving. They're probably suitable for nailing floorboards down or something. I don't know. They're awful things. Could do with some annular rings because when you hit a piece of wood, the annular ring bites and it and then every time you move, it just carries on and it pulls itself into the wood. So when it gets on the next piece of wood, it starts pulling the next piece of wood towards it, which is what I need down here. Because if you look there, um, you will see that there is a gap. And I'm having to hit the wood in order to get it to come towards itself. I should really have bought a G-clamp, but I was too tight to uh, mean whatever. Uh, well, poor, I didn't have the money um, to buy it. It's about 10 euro to buy a G-clamp to pull the thing on before I nail it, hold it in G-clamp, then nail it in place. That would have helped a lot. So I'm not pushing my luck with those boards at the minute. I'm going to nail them on later because at the top they're perfect. Um, there's, enough, there's enough connection at either end there on that beam. That beam, I leveled, if any... Check it out, people, if you want to know these things. I leveled it using um, a water tube. So you get a tube of water, fill it with water, a plastic tube, fill it with water, put it on either end, and see if the water, the beam is level with the water. Adjust it and set it. It's about a half a meter height because I'm figuring I'm going to put a, a single bed on top of that. If, if, if I absolutely have to, I'll get a single bed mattress. By the time that gets on, it'll be getting rather tall. So it'll, it, it's, its purpose is to be a seat as well as a bed for me. Uh, across this side here, as I said in a previous video, there's that hole in the wall there. Over there. Slow down so the camera can keep up. That's where the, the little fire is going to go here. And it's um, going to keep this place warm. Now that fire I've got lit upstairs. It's actually putting out a lot of heat just in the general direction in the open air. So I reckon I could probably light it in here and maybe stick a rock on top of it or something to get the rock really hot and then put the fire out and then go to bed with this hot rock in the room. That's one option. That's very, very basic. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what, what I can do. But that thing has been made. It's... Um, it's a barbecue, and it was given to me by the most amazingly kind guy in the Philippines, in, in, not the Philippines, in, in the village. Um, it's one of the kindest blokes you'll ever meet. The people around here are amazing. And he gave me this barbecue thing, and I looked at it and I thought, is not it's not exactly pretty. It's made out of a gas cylinder, but boy, it's so good. It's just amazing. It does such a good job. And the gas cylinder material is superior quality steel, so I'm all for it now. Gas cylinder barbecues, let's do it. Um, so I'm going to keep that thing forever <laughs> and barbecue on it. At the minute, I'm going to go back and cook my, cook my supper. And uh, 
on top of here, I'm going to have to put a ceiling, which I have not yet decided what to put up there. It'll possibly be the floorboards that I will be putting on the top of here anyway, because I don't want to buy wood and waste any money on anything. You don't want to be buying materials and then um, scrapping things and then wasting all that money, you know. So in here, I'll plug up all these gaps and everything. It should be really lovely and stuck. And um, small spaces are very, very easy to warm. So no matter how cold it gets here and how inefficient this place is, it won't matter a lot because it will. it's a very small space to heat. So I may get somebody to uh, fabricate a stove for me out of the same principle, but making a sort of wood-fired stove out of a gas cylinder because, um, boy, they seem to be really good quality things. Either that or a great big oxygen cylinder. I've considered it in the past. We'll see. We'll see what's available. Lots of things available in the UK which just aren't available here, like pallets, for example. Pallets are so useful. You can't find them here. You just forget it. So, um, that's it for now. So, Jesus be with you.